Hey guys, welcome back to the arena. Today we're going to be doing a qualifier play-in um, for Limited. And in case you're new to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. I really do appreciate you. If you do end up liking my content, please consider subscribing and maybe sharing it with a friend of yours who might also like it. For my returning viewers, thank you guys so much again for coming back and supporting me. I really do appreciate you guys big time. Uh, you make this channel happen, so thanks so much. Okay, so kind of getting in here. Um, first of all, there is going to be a deck list in the description, both on untapped.gg and also moxfield.com. And then there also will be a link to all of my other playlists for both my standard content, uh, Road to Rank 1 in Best of 1 Standard, as well as my collab drafts, my um, solo drafts, and other standard event content. So if you want to check that out, have a look in the description. Um, I do want to give a shout out here to my members. So thank you so much for becoming members of the channel. Um, if you do want to become a member and help support my channel, uh, you can do so for as little as $1.99 a month to get early access to my content. It's a great way to help support me. Here is exactly how you do that. If you would like to become a member and help support my channel, you can do so. Just click on the join button right next to where it says subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Um, or if you would like to just support my channel just on a one-time basis, you can also click the super thanks button uh, here right on the, uh, also right under the banner here for the video. So these are both great ways to support the channel. I really appreciate you guys and I couldn't do this without you. So thank you guys so much again for your consideration. All right, let's get into some games. Okay, so let's hop in. Um, I did already purchase the, um, the, the, uh, the packs here and I ended up actually making a build real quick. So this is the, uh, the pool and it turned out to be a pretty weak pool for red and blue. Um, white was kind of middling but uh, really it looked like black green was sort of where it was at. Um, some of the really strong rares that we have here. Uh, we've got Lotus Ring, which goes well in any deck. We also had uh, Bristly Bill um, Spine Sower, which was a really nice addition here. And then we have some of the really big, um, great uncommons here. We've got uh, Spinewood Armadillo. We have, um, let's see, what else have we got? Oh, we've got another great rare here, Rush of Dread, which looks to be really powerful. Otherwise, it's just kind of like really solid creatures. Three copies of Vault Plunder is amazing. We have a copy of Murder, Desperate Bloodseeker, Mourner's Surprise, Servant of the Stinger, uh, Voracious Varmint, Mobile Homestead, and then um, An Unfortunate Accident, Snakeskin Veil, Ankle Biter, Giant Beaver, um, Cactarantula, uh, Betrayal at the Vault, and then in our uh, we've also got here Beastbun Outcast, or a really premium uncommon, Drover Grizzly, Patient Naturalist, Honest Rutstein, which is just really a good fit here in this deck. And then for kind of the lands, we have 17 lands, running one copy of Forlorn Flats just because it's a desert and it kind of helps enable Cactarantula and Servant of the Stinger. And then one copy of Stans, uh, Sandstorm Verge, which I found to be pretty useful in sort of two color decks. So there were some tough cuts. Um, other cards here did have um, a second copy of Drover Grizzly and also a copy of Raucous Entertainer. Now for a long time, you know, I thought really highly of Raucous Entertainer and it is certainly a solid two drop. However, um, just looking at kind of like the win rates of all the cards here on 17lands.com, um, which I highly recommend doing, this actually came in a little bit lower than the other two drops here, lower than Mobile Homestead, Voracious Varmint, Servant of the Stinger, Mourner Surprise, or Desperate Bloodseeker. So, even lower than ankle biter, which I was surprised by. But um, yeah, and then Drover Grizzly, we just kind of needed to shave one of the three drops. Uh, this actually has a surprisingly high win rate. For some reason, people don't seem to value this card very highly, but it it's uh, it's pretty highly rated on um, 17lands.com. So at any rate, those were kind of the tough cuts. Uh, Reach for the Sky is also a decent trick, but it's just, we needed to cut something. Um, same thing with Rooftop Assassin. The really tough cut we had to make here was in the six drop. We do have a copy of Back From War, which is really good. And it was just a matter of 
you know, what I wanted to cut here, whether it was going to be back for more, Betrayal of the Vault, Cac Tarantula, or Spinewood's Armadillo. Part of the reason for my decision to cut back for more is <clears throat> we already had a pretty full six drop slot. Um, sealed is typically a little slower than draft, and I just wanted to have, I feel like kind of being a little bit more proactive with having creatures that sort of do a lot. Like the Armadillo, it wasn't going to cut Cac Tarantula just because it's a little bit harder to target. Um, or at least you get a card when it happens. And then part of the reason I kept Betrayal of the Vault over Back for More is because we were a little bit lighter on removal. Um, I know that Back for More is a fight spell, but if you don't have one of these larger creatures, there's a chance that it can be a little bit more difficult to get the benefit off of the fight part of it. So Betrayal of the Vault um, is really nice because not only do we have some big creatures, but we also have two Death Touch creatures in... Uh, Servant of the Stinger and Ankle Biter, which are really good at fight spells. And so that's part of the reason why I ended up going with Betrayal of the Vault over the back for more. So all that said, we're going to go ahead and hop into the first uh, game here. We have to go X and 1 in order to stay in 6 and 1, or, or better, to stay in. And uh, yeah, so let's jump into the first game. <clears throat> I've really been excited for this um, uh, limited format. I've, I've watched so many of Paul Chion's videos, and he is such an amazing drafter. Um, if you haven't checked his stuff out, he is like the best drafter or the most entertaining drafter to watch um, that I've seen in a while. So I would definitely, definitely, is a shameless plug for his channel, but you know, definitely check out his stuff. He is great. Um, yeah, opening hand looks great. But I learned so much about Limited as just a result from watching his videos. And he also kind of inspired me to do my sort of Road to Rank 1 standard series uh, in Best of 1 just to sort of try that out. Okay, so let's get the flats going here. Got some nice stuff to do on turn 3. Okay, Mobile Homestead would have been great last turn. But let's go for Vault Plunderer here. Okay, I was going to say they could have Phantom Interference, but I guess they didn't. And Patient Naturalist is a nice pickup. Ooh, Rush of Dread. Okay, that's going to be a good one. Um, what do we want to do here? Could go for Patient Naturalist. Or just another Vault Plunderer. Yeah, they're both pretty good. Um... We're kind of, we've got all the lands we need here, double black, double green. So I think I'm just going to go for the Vault Plunderer. Also, it's a little bit more aggressive than Patient Naturalist, and if they don't have a creature, we can kind of just keep pushing in some damage. Um, see, I don't think there's, like, stop cold is not, a, isn't it flash speed, right? I guess I don't, I don't remember. So I suppose we could play, like, Voracious Varmint to have that ready, just in case there's any kind of, like, enchantment nonsense. Um, other than that, probably just that, plus, like, Patient Naturalist, maybe? I guess we could run out the Varmint here. Okay, Rattle Worm. Yeah, Rattle Worm is definitely going to do it. So now we can just cast Honest Rut's team to get back our Vault Plunder, which feels pretty good. reason to try to trade here. I think we're doing fine racing right now. Plus we've got Rush of Dread, so feel okay taking this. Okay, 
Okay, Armadillo is a really nice pickup. <clears throat> we don't have quite enough mana to do like double spell here unless we want to do. Let's see, yeah, because we've got six mana. So we're just a little bit short. <clears throat> Unfortunately, the Paladin does kind of make things a little bit more complicated. I suppose we could go for Rush of Dread here for five and have them lose half of their life or get half their cards in hand too, which is kind of nice. Three cards, that's really good. Get half their creatures. Half their life is also no joke since we're in kind of a racing situation. Um, man, I kind of want like some more mana here. We've already played a land this turn. Armadillo is just kind of a safe bet though too. Like, I think I'm just gonna go for the Armadillo play here. It's not as interesting. Um, like if we went for like a Rush of Dread play there and they like sacked the Paladin, we could get a nice attack in. But I think we just just sit here. If they have an answer here for Armadillo, we can try to double block. Okay, they've definitely got something here. So possibilities are like reach for the sky, trash the town. And I think maybe the best way to deal with this, uh, we can take the five, I think, and then just put like a double block here on this rattle worm to make sure it dies. I guess if they have like metamorphosis, that could be. Yeah, trash the town makes sense. Now, if they don't play a creature, we can use Rush of Dread to get their Spinewood Paladin plus a bunch of cards. And that's still pretty good. It is possible that, I mean, they have counter mana up here so we could get blown out potentially hmm we are getting kind of low but i think maybe we just play some creatures out and that's actually then we try to set up for the big rush of dread so let's go for patient naturalist to begin And then we'll go for Vault Plunderer. Ankle Biter is a really nice pickup. And we'll get Homestead here. I guess I'll attack first since we get a free attack with the Varmint. Um, since we have Ankle Biter, I mean, we are at five, so we could like do like a double block here to like soak some potential trample damage. So I think we can probably get in with Honest Redstein. They have Phantom Interference. I guess they haven't got it, so that's fine. Wow, rattle worm number two.
So we can get them for six life next turn with Rush of Dread <clears throat> and half their creatures. And if we just shove, depending on what they play, we could just potentially just get them that way. All right, so here I think I'm gonna get the mobile homestead going here. That plus the ankle biter just to make sure that it dies. I just wanna soak a fair amount of the trample damage. Could also just be like super safe here. Oops, all right. I think maybe you just wanna be really safe here and just like triple block since we are at four. So I feel like double pump is like one of the only ways we lose here against this deck right now. Okay, they're passing with a bunch of mana up. So I'm definitely worried about potential counter spells here. Um, if they have three steps ahead, it's super awkward. But I think we have to assume they've at least got like Phantom Interference. So we probably don't get to do like the full Rush of Dread. If we get, let's see. So if we play Servant of the Stinger, we can't crew that because this is just a one three. So I guess if we get if we do half their life, they go to they go to five. We can attack with these three. We're still forcing lethal. So we probably just go for creatures and life and ignore their losing, you know, getting the card advantage. I think that's probably the play. Just to play around the potential phantom interference. So half life and creatures okay they did have the three steps ahead <sighs> okay All right, well. Can still force some damage through here. They've got a block. No, they don't have to block. I think we're just dead now. Oh well. Ah, it's too bad. They literally had to have the rare to, to get through that. So I think, you know, looking back on an earlier turn, we probably should have blocked the Paladin and not taken the damage because that opened us up to getting blown out like this. Yeah, we can't get rid of the token. Nope. Well, it came down to a rare. But yeah, I think we could have played, around, played it around better to not run into that issue. So, so much for that. Now we would need to win out in order to to get to the next round. Okay, we're missing a color, which sucks. Um, we don't have anything to do until turn four. I think we have to mulligan this hand. Okay, it's a much better hand. I think I'm just gonna cut the Betrayal because it's the most expensive card here. Everything else is kind of within range. I 
But yeah, it always hurts losing, you know, a turn that, uh, or a game that I think we probably could have won if we'd played a little bit tighter. Okay, let's get the homestead going. We'll be able to use um, Desperate Bloodseeker to see if we can maybe hit a land. Ooh, Varmint is pretty good here. Although hopefully we can get the Varmint to blow up the homestead instead of this Lotus Ring. Actually, never mind. This is indestructible. That's super cool. Uh, yeah, we've got a bunch of Graveyard Recursion, so we'll try to hit our... Although we just missed two land there, which is kind of too bad. But we definitely have some Graveyard Recursion, so I think it's good to start working on our own library. Oh, still got a land, which is kind of nice. So they probably just hit us for two here and then blow up the homestead, I'm guessing. For another, yeah, for some other reason, I don't know why people value the homestead fairly low, but it is a very high win rate on 17 lands, uh, like 57%. So, yeah, this is, this is a great card. <clears throat> Would definitely run it. <clears throat> okay, so now, I guess we just try to get in with our homestead again here. Just try to push as much damage. And we're happy to trade with Alchemist if they're willing to do that. Ooh, okay, that's good to know. Honest Rutstein should be good. <clears throat> That's actually going to be really nice on the Bloodseeker. 5-5 five, five lifelink is pretty sick. We could go for Rutstein, but since we don't have any creatures to get back, we'll probably hold Rutstein a little bit. If our opponent knows this is indestructible. God, and he gets Vigilance too? Oh, that's hilarious. They could have still tried to sack it just to target it, just so we didn't get the, the lifelink. But, yeah, we'll take it. Actually... Kind of funny thing there, we could have sacked the Bloodseeker to get the mana. We could play Rutstein to get back the Bloodseeker, but nah, this is fine. Alright, so Eartha Joe just gets double activations. That's pretty good. 
Starship Dread is also quite good. Um, yeah, man, we, we might have to get this Rets team going here just to enable our Cac Tarantula. I guess we're still winning just on the 5-5 five, five lifelink. This is definitely, like, tough to deal with, right? Like, I just want to get value out of Rutstein, but maybe it's good enough just to hang out until they, they're forced to deal with this thing. I'll give it another turn. Yeah, but, like, if we get, like, a swamp, any land, really... I don't think there's any card we can draw that will not help us here. Yeah. Okay, that works. They're going to have to deal with this thing eventually. <laughs> Destroy target creature. Okay, that works. Alright, well now we can get our Rutstein value. Could have also gone for Giant Beaver there, but we're at 24, so I'm not super worried about it. And it would also enable us to cast Cactarantula. Okay, that <laughs> is another card that is not amazing right now. Um, yeah, I guess we just try to re-equip. I think we want to target ourselves. We still have more, like... Oof, those are both great cards. We really need... Well, really a land of any kind would be great. I don't think we have any more double black spells in our deck. Although well, the good news is, oh wait, I thought we could sack in response. Oh, I suppose it had summoning sickness, so it couldn't do that. I was gonna say we could sack in response to get mana for murder, but we're getting kind of beat down now. Yeah, we... Oh, man. I'm just getting run over. Okay, so... Rush of Dread for six. Problem is they get to keep their good creatures. They would sack these three and have five damage presenting. We could just do a Cac Tarantula, but then they still hit for a ton of damage. With Earth of Joe and the double activates, I think we have to rush of dread here. I think we get half their cards. Um, don't have time for their life. So half creatures and half their cards rounded up. Yeah, I think that one turn we played the, the Honest Rutstein and just tried to get value right away, we should have played the Beaver instead to 
be able to block some of those creatures. That was... I valued... I, I thought we had... We're at 24. I thought we were doing okay on life, but yeah, that was a mistake, I think. Yeah, and now we just have... Ah, oh, we can't double spell this turn. I think we're just dead, unfortunately. I guess we could unfortunate accident to make a 1-1 one, one to block. So like beaver plus unfortunate accident as an instant for a blocker, I think it's gonna be where we're at. Okay, well we're not dead. Not technically. Yeah, but if they have anything here. All right, can we hold on? Oh man, we only have seven mana. Well, we can go to one. I think we want the Spinewoods Armadillo just because it has ward. Although this will give us a card if they have something. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with the Spinewoods though. That is pretty good. Okay. Can we survive here? We've got seven mana. I think we need murder. So we could do like just Cac Tarantula and then be in the same position. But since they could have something with haste, I really don't like Cactus Sure Shot. Might have to just murder that thing right now. And then hope to go like Servant plus Cactarantula the next turn. Yeah, I think if this is just a too dangerous of a card. We have to get rid of it. Just because of what it enables. And then we can attack with Beaver. And if they want to double block, we can we'll trade for Earth of Joe and we're fine with it. I think we're fine with it. Um that's actually not a great trade. Uh, maybe we just sit. All right, <laughs> we can vault plunder to one, which is pretty dangerous. Um, so we can go servant of the stinger plus Lotus Ring, or just play Cactarantula. If we go Lotus Ring on this Armadillo, we can actually Edict one of their creatures, though, because it gives it Vigilance, right? I think that's the play. And then we can serve into the Stinger after that. Do we also attack with a Giant Beaver? 
I don't think so. I think we just... I think we just abyss them. This is a really close game. I think it's it's too dangerous to play this Vault Plunderer. Um, just because we might go to one and then if they draw a desert we just lose the game so I think we have to go servant here paladin is amazing as always all right well that's a land which is super helpful so we have seven, eight mana, which is not enough to do everything. Do we want to attack with Servant of the Stinger? I don't think so. I think we just try to abyss them again. They can finally trade for it, but they are going to pay quite a price. I don't think, I think we're still at a place where we can't attack with Beaver safely. So they can still make good trades there. They might just take it, yeah. But if they take it, we can kill them with Vault Plunderer. Woo! Oh, Vault Plunderer for the win. Nice! <laughs> Woo! That was a close one. Yeah, sometimes Vault Plunder has to go face. All right, one and one. All right, opening hand looks great. Nice one, two, three drop. Mobile Homestead is so great on two. Ooh, Scale Storm. That is a scary ass creature. Excuse my language. Um,. Could hold up the snake skin. I mean, I, I seriously doubt they're blocking with it, though. I feel like it's better to just go for Vault Plunderer here. We'll leave the Ankle Biter back. Pretty sweet hitting a land. Now that we have double black, then we have to kill this thing stat. Oh, yeah, we want triple black because we want to go desperate bloodseeker and then still hold up murder. They could have the sink skin veil there, so we just got to be cognizant of that. Um, let's target ourselves. So 
So I think we definitely wait till their turn for murder. Oh yeah, we'll leave that on top. That seems like a good play. Alchemist, yeah, no thank you. If they have the Snakeskin Veil, it's awkward. Final showdown. Okay. Could Sandstorm Verge here, but I think we just want to go Spinewood's Armadillo. Guess we'll leave that as a surprise for next turn. Um, could full send here for eight. They get to trade with their, their pick. But then they also get free attacks, which isn't great. I don't want to leave Spinewoods back, so I think we just. Which one of these do we value more? Probably the Vault Plunder. I guess we can attack with Bloodseeker here. Actually, I might just hold both of them back in case they've got some kind of trick. coming do we want to attack with both attacking with both is pretty risky I think I'm just gonna attack with one here they probably just make the trade snap block here yeah Maybe it would have been better to get just get in with Bloodseeker last turn. But I feel like yeah, getting the, the card off the top is super nice. Okay, now we can use Sandstorm Verge to help push some stuff through. So if we full send and make their beaver unable to block um we can use snakeskin veil if they try to to block here we we are one for two or yeah one for twoing ourselves but um we would then be pushing through potential lethal maybe we hold back the blood seeker yeah i mean because they probably use alchemist to get beaver going next turn Okay, I think either way, we're definitely going to make it so Beaver can't block. And we're definitely pushing with Armadillo. I think we do need to threaten Lethal here. So if we, sh if we full send, they have to block at least something. Yeah, this is a little dicey. I mean, I guess if we full send, they just single block and they have seven power coming back at us, but we can gain two, go to 10. It's, it's a little iffy. I think we just go for it though. Since we've got this snakeskin veil, can maybe get the surprise win. Yeah, and again, I'm happy to make this one for two here just to get that summoner off the table. 
closer to healthier life total and like spine armadillo against beaver is pretty good especially with sandstorm verge so now they need like an extra creature to not die I think they're just dead here, unless there's something I'm not seeing. Also, they had Vigilance. They could have just attacked last turn. They didn't even attack, which is weird. Yeah. <clears throat> Two and one. Staying alive. Hmm. <clears throat> <clears throat> All right, opening hand looks great. Got stuff to do. I've actually never played with Bristly Bill. I hear the card is good. Nice three drop there with Lotus Ring, and we can just equip and start bashing. Yeah, we had some uh, some very tough shaves over the last couple games. Ooh, that's a nice three drop. Hopefully no Thunder Salvo here. Nice. Nice pickup there. So he starts doubling counters on five. Wow. Card seems completely amazing. Rambling Possum, I don't think is going to get it done. Decent card, but... Um, I think we want to start diversifying our stuff here. Could make the Vault Plunder a... Uh... 4-2. Yeah, I think we just... Hmm. I guess we could also make Bristly Bill a 4-4. A four four. I'm just trying to think of, like, he has probably fight spells. Like, throw from the saddle would kill it still. Um... He didn't have it last turn though. Nothing for three. I'm trying to think what he'd have for four that would be better. <sighs> Cause like if this is a four two, it still doesn't like do anything here. It's probably the safe play though. All right. I guess I'm just gonna diversify. And I think we just sit. I don't wanna trade. Okay, we've got a Free Strider Commando on the way. If he wants to push for four, I am super happy to let that happen. Yeah, I didn't think so. Okay, now let's get our Sandstone, Sandstorm Verge going. 
I guess theoretically we could use Mourner's Surprise too. But we're just gonna buff up the creatures, so. We're just gonna double counters here. I think I'm gonna put another counter on Plunderer just to sort of diversify threats. I'm not even gonna wait. Seven, five. I mean, we can just wait and do it again, right? God, that, that's just such a busted card. Yeah, I don't think we... I don't really want to trade here. Let's just uh, see if we can go another turn. And if they kill it, we can just mourner surprise. Seems completely unreasonable. Yeah, I mean, those are both very good cards for sure. But I don't know that they can compete. Let's get another black source here. Now I think, see this will get four more counters. Let's get another one on Bristy Bill. And then I think we just do the thing again. We don't even want to wait. Cause yeah, this will be a eight power and an 11, nine, good God. So I guess they could still double block here to take down the 11-9. I, I mean, like, we're in no rush here, right? We can just wait another turn and do it again. I guess they could key keeper. Ankle Biter is a nice pickup. Do we want to give a token to Ankle Biter and start building that one up too? Eh, that's actually not a bad idea. So what do we want to do with our mana this turn? Probably just double counters again. We could do Quip with the Lotus Ring. One, two, three. We just want to keep doubling counters. I mean, this is just so good, right? Like, how do they ever beat this? Okay, now this is like gonna start abyssing him. Um, do we wait maybe one more turn to give this thing vigilance? Like he does have a pretty big board. So I think maybe we wait one more turn. He's going to try to do a big push here, which I totally get. Alright, so this thing is Hexproof and Vigilance. So, let's kill the Tycoon, because it's kind of hard to deal with otherwise. 
Um, let's kill the commando. And do you want to kill Miriam? I don't think he has any other mounts, does he? We could also just kill like the bandit here. And we're taking 6, 11, 14. That's pretty dangerous though. We just want to kill the 5-5 five, five and preserve our life total. surprise but I think now we just want to put another counter here on Bristly Bill to make him closer to lethal so instead of doubling if we just put the Lotus Ring on Bristly Bill that makes him an 18-18 and he's also a lethal threat at that point then we can do murder. Don't have enough for that and unfortunate accident, but we can go murder on his four or five. And then we can also make it a one one, which is super relevant. So if we attack with Bill, that's probably a 1-1 one, one that blocks. I think we have to hold back with Vault Plunderer here. So we just Edict one of his guys. And this is a Sorcery. This is Instant. Yeah, I guess Mortar Surprise sort of does the same thing. Actually, wait, we can't cast it. We can cast... Oh, we can't cast either one. Oof. It's actually really bad. I think we didn't tap our mana at the greatest there. Thornado, sure. Leyline binding, okay. What's he targeting? Bristly Bill. We can sack him in response and then unfortunate accident something. Let's kill, I guess probably the key keeper is more dangerous. Okay, that worked pretty well. Okay, we can Warner Surprise and get the thing back. So this is just going to Edict as 1-1. One, one. Um, I guess let's draw a card here. Actually, if we can make it so the 1-1 one, one can't block, we can kill Miriam, which is pretty funny. And then I think, yeah, I'd rather just play this than equip the Lotus Rings. So I think we just attack like this, and then we have hold this back, I guess. So yeah, use force blocks on the Miriam. And now we can just spawn outcaster and we can warner surprise back the bristly bill feels good Ooh, 
Ooh, Shepherds is a really nice draw. Super nice draw. But he might not have the mana for it, which means we can edict his shepherd this turn. Ooh, Drover Grizzly. Whenever Drover, okay. It has to be there and attack. All right, so let's, how do we want to do this? Definitely going to verge the 1-1. One, one. So this is a force block. Um... I guess let's just play Bristly Bill. And then I think I'm just gonna put Vigilance on our Outcaster. So we can push for eight damage here. I guess we could have played the Drover Grizzly instead of, um, but this is still pretty good. I mean, we're, he has a huge uphill battle here. Key Keeper alone is not gonna do it. Okay, so we can make something a little bigger. I guess let's just put a counter on Bristly Bill himself. And now that we're pushing lethal, so this should do it unless he's got nonsense. He has nonsense. Okay, so he's gonna go to 12, nine, 11, but we can double the counters and still kill him. It'll work. <laughs> a 35 30. <laughs> Gotta love it. <laughs> Bristly Bill is a silly card. That's all I'm gonna say. Alright, three and one. looks great a little slow but we're in the place so that's always good okay that helps um I guess I want to hold an ankle biter back here because don't want to trade one for two since we're not going to trade grizzly for varmint so we'll just sit back with the ankle biter sure i'll bite Let's just giant beaver here. And I don't want to make this trade. Ooh. 
Ooh, Rhinus Rutstein is pretty good. Um, I guess actually if we have Honest Rutstein, we could just attack with both. Since we can just get it back. I do kind of want to saddle this thing, though. Actually, if we said this becomes a 5-3, we can start getting it over the hump. Suppose we can do it with Varmint also. Yeah. Okay, I think I'll just lead out here with Voracious Varmint. To saddle the beaver, and then attack with both, and use Mourner Surprise to get back the, um, whatever thing. Oh, it's power three or more. Okay, yeah, I guess that works. Okay, that also works. Surprise! <laughs> Ooh, those are some nasty cards for him to get back. Tiny bones. Yuck. We could have like trash the town or something to get over the top here, but I'm totally willing to throw this 1-1 one -one at it. Okay. Um, so quite interesting choice here. We could go for Rutstein. If we draw a land, we get to play Armadillo, which is pretty sweet. Beaver is still pretty good. Um, what do we want to do? I guess we could also just attack with both and see if they want to make a trade with Tiny Bones and then use Rutstein to get it back, which is decent. I kind of, I don't want Tiny Bones to have any chance of getting through though, so. Yeah, I mean, I guess I'm happy to, to make some trades here. We can always trade Tiny Bones for Honest Rut Steam, but that doesn't seem quite as good. All right, I'll bite with both, see what they do. We do need a second green source to get this going, though. Another green source would be so sweet. Okay, back for more, sure. Yuck. That is gross. That is super gross. <sighs> yeah, 
Ambush Gigapede, huh? Well, they definitely have plans on getting Tiny Bones through. So I think with that in mind, we might want to play our Drover Grizzly here. Just so we, because otherwise we have to throw a t giant beaver in front of their tiny bones, which does not sound like a good time. So as counterintuitive as it sounds, I think we have to play Drover Grizzly here. that green source any year now um i don't really want to take six we could play we could take a turn off playing homestead plus lotus ring that seems a little bit suspicious i think we just admit to ourselves that giant beaver is trading with gigapede or at least attempting to Okay, so much for that. Yeah, Lotus Ring is pretty great, but so is Spinewood's Armadillo. I don't know what's correct here. I mean, if we like, like we have a lot of forests in our deck, we have at least seven more. So that's, that's like, um, what is that? It's about like a one in three, maybe a one in four. I think we go for the Armadillo. a really nice play though for sure I think we gotta just try to get in front of this thing yeah Gigapede is pretty nasty If they've got just back-to-back -back removal, that's going to do it. All right, it's now or never, Forest. Apparently, it's never. <laughs> oh, it's been a fun run. Um, I suppose we can go and get a Forest, but that doesn't really save us here. So, tough beats. I guess don't sleep on Ambush Gigapede. I think we, you know, we, we definitely threw the first game of the series, so we could have taken our loss there and potentially gone on, but it was a fun run. Ended up getting 3,000 gems and had a free entry, so that's always fun. Um, so, yeah, thanks for watching. We will catch you for the next one.